Hey guys, what's going on? John here for another Magic the Gathering video. And in this video, uh, I've made a budget commander deck. It is Cult Worship, Athreus, God of Passage. It's a sacrifice or aristocrats based deck um, around Athreos. It's $50 budget, not including Athreos himself because he's super expensive. Um, Anyway, uh, before we get into the actual deck tech, I'd like to ask you to do three things. Number one and two, like and subscribe. Um, liking the video and subscribing to my channel take almost no time, and they seriously help out this channel. Number three is go to patreon.com slash slackora1 or the link in the description and become a patron. You get really cool rewards and... You get to become a patron, get a shout out at the end of every video, much like this one. It's this, oh my, this video. Anyway, now let's get into the deck tech. So we start with the commander himself, Athreos, God of Passage. He's a 5 4 indestructible. As long as your devotion to white and black is less than 7, Athreos is not a creature. Whenever another creature you own dies, return it to your hand unless target opponent pays 3 life. And he costs $27.97. So basically, the way to build around him is pretty simple. Force your own creatures to die, get some cool death triggers, and get your opponents down to such low life that they physically cannot afford to pay those 3 life without losing the game. So, you return all your cards to your hand, and then have the ability to play them all again. Alright, so that's Athreos, now into the rest of the deck. So, our first category is Creature-Based Sacrifice Outlets. So, here we've just got our creatures that can allow us to sacrifice our own creatures. So, we've got Carrion Feeder, which is a 1-mana one 1-1 one 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 that cannot block. If you sacrifice a creature, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Carrion Feeder is good because it's a big attacker in a lot of situations, but also just allows us to sacrifice things really early in the game. Same with both Viscera Seer and Thought Picker Witch. Viscera Seer is one of the best creatures in the deck, also the most expensive creature in the deck at $2.12. Its ability is Sacrifice a Creature, Scry 1, which is very good. It allows you to have an insane amount of card advantage. Thought Picker Witch, pay 1 mana, Sacrifice a Creature, look at the top 2 cards of target opponent's library, then remove one of them from the game, send it immediately into exile. That's an amazing, amazing ability. Alright, continuing on, we've got Ailee Eternal Pilgrim, 2 mana, 2-3 two, Death Touch, you can sacrifice a creature to gain life equal to that's toughness, and you can also sacrifice a creature to exile target non-land permanent. Activate this ability only if you have at least 10 life more than your starting life total. Blood Throne Vampire is pretty simple. 2 mana, 1-1. One, one. Sacrifice a creature, it gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. And Cartel Aristocrat, 2 mana, 2-2. Two, two. Sacrifice another creature, Cartel Aristocrat, gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Next, we have Pitiless Pontiff. Uh, it's a 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. You can sacrifice a creature to give it death touch and indestructible of, until end of turn. Priest of Forgotten Gods, 2 mana 1-2. Tap, sacrifice two other creatures. Any number of target players each lose two life and sacrifice a creature. You add two black to your mana pool and draw a card. And we have Fell Shepherd. It's a 7 mana 8 6, so very expensive. Whenever Fell Shepherd deals combat damage to a player, you may return to your hand all creature cards that were put into your graveyard from the battlefield this turn. Pay 1 black, sacrifice another creature. Target creature gets minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. Continuing on with our last two creature based sacrifice outlets, we have Smothering Abomination. 4 mana, 4-3, four, Flying Devoid. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. Whenever you sacrifice a creature, draw a card. Very good for our deck. Allows us to sacrifice a creature and also gives us a ton of card draw. Then we've got Whisper Blood Liturgist. 4 mana, 2-2. Two, two. Tap, sack 2 creatures. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Also, very good. 
Our second category is very similar. It's artifact and spell-based sacrifice outlets. So we've got bone splinters. You can sack a creature, pay one, destroy target creature. It's a sorcery for one. Well, yes, I said pay one. Alter's Reap is an instant for two. As an additional cost to cast it, sack a creature, draw two cards. Morbid Curiosity. Three mana, sorcery, additional cost, sacrifice an artifact or creature. Draw cards equal to the CMC of the sacrifice permanent. Blood Divination. Four mana. Sorcery is an additional cost to cast the spell, sack a creature, draw three cards. And then Carnage Altar. Two mana artifact, pay three, sacrifice a creature, draw a card. That generates a lot of card, card advantage for this deck. Uh, so that's pretty good card. And then we've also got Culling Dice. Uh, it's two mana artifact. You can tap it to sacrifice a creature, put a charge counter on it. And then you can pay one, sacrifice it, and draw a card for each charge counter on Culling Dice. Continuing on, we've got the most expensive card in the deck coming in at $4.88 is Ashnod's Altar. It's a three mana artifact, sacrifice creature, add two colorless to your mana pool. That is absolutely brutal in how strong it is. Ashnod's Altar, do not sleep on this card. It is probably the best card in this deck for sacrificing things. Spawning Pit, two mana artifact, sacrifice creature, put a charge counter on Spawning Pit. Pay one, remove two charge counters from spawning pit, put a 2-2 spawn artifact creature token into play. Also pretty good, gives you a lot of cheap blockers while also sacrificing your creatures. Vampiric Rites, one mana enchantment, you can pay two, sack a creature, you gain a life and draw a card. Also very, very strong. Our last artifact or spell based sacrifice outlet is Hidden Stockpile. It's a two mana enchantment with revolt at the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, create a 1-1 colorless servo, which is a very strong ability for this, uh, for this deck because your permanents will always be leaving the battlefield. There's not going to be many turns where your permanents don't. You can also pay one, sacrifice creature, scry one. So it's a Viscera Seer-esque ability on it. All right, category three is self-recurring creatures. We only have two because most of them are very expensive. Number one is Gutter Bones. It's a one mana two one that enters the battlefield tapped. You can pay two to return it from your graveyard to your hand only during your turn and only if an opponent lost life this turn. Um, it's a very good card. Allows us to grab some... Uh, well, it allows us to grab it back from the graveyard, which means we can sacrifice it pretty much as much as we want. Same thing with Reassembling Skeleton. It's a two mana, one, one, pay two, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield, tapped. All right, category four is our largest category. It is Death Triggers. All right, Doom Traveler is a one mana, one, one. When it dies, you put a one, one white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Very, very good. Carrier Thrall. 2 mana, 2, 1. When it dies, put a 1, 1 Eldrazi Scion token onto the battlefield. It has sacrificed this creature. Add 1 to your mana pool. So Scions and Spawns are very good in this deck. Cruel Celebrant is a brand new card just printed in War of the Spark. 2 mana, 1, 2. Whenever it or another creature or Planeswalker you control dies, each opponent loses 1 life and you gain 1 life. So you'll be ticking each opponent with Cruel Celebrant, which is very strong. Moving on, we've got Imperious Oligarch. It's 2 mana, 2, 1 Vigilance with Afterlife 1. When it dies, create a 1, 1 White and Black Spirit token with Flying. Unruly Mob. 2 mana, 1, 1. Whenever another creature you control dies, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Unruly Mob. Pretty strong. That can get out of hand very quick. Zulaport Cutthroat, 2 mana 1 1. Whenever Zulaport Cutthroat or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. Same thing as Cruel Celebrant, also very good. Cathodion, 3 mana 3 3. When it dies, add 3 colorless to your mana pool. Gives you some good mana ramp. Grim Horaspex, it's a 3 mana 3 2 with Morph for 1. And whenever another non token creature you control dies, draw a card. It's a massive card advantage generator in this deck and at only a dollar and five cents it's very cheap and great pick up this card while it's still cheap because it will go up 
And then finally, uh, on this page, we've got Junk Diver. It's three mana, one, one flyer. When it's put into a graveyard from play, return an artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Pawn of Ulamog. Whenever it or another non-token creature you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may put a 01 Eldrazi spawn uh, onto the battlefield. It has sacrificed this creature at one of your mana pool. A huge source of card advantage, but also, you know, triggering the ability of um, Athreos, although no one would be stupid enough to pay the three life. Um, Zathrid Necromancer, whenever it or another human creature you control dies, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield tapped. Uh, Falconrath Noble, 4 mana 2-2, two, two, whenever it, with flying, whenever it or another creature dies, target player loses a life and you gain a life. Pitiless Blunderer, whenever another creature you control dies, create a colorless treasure with tap sacrifice. This artifact Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Another massive source of ramp. Um, Sifter of Skulls, four mana, four three Eldrazi with Devoid. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, put a one one colorless Eldrazi Scion creature token onto the battlefield. It has sacrificed this creature. Add one colorless to your mana pool. And I know I said sacrifice. That was on purpose. Tesa Karlov, it's a very good card in this deck. 4 mana, 2-4. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Gosh, that must trigger some people. Creature tokens you control have vigilance and lifelink. Puns, am I right? Uh, Vindictive Vampire, 4 mana, 2-3. Never another creature you control dies. Vindictive Vampire deals 1 damage to each opponent. You gain 1 life. Archon of Justice is a 5-mana 4-4 flyer. When it dies, exile target permanent. With Athreos late in the game, this is very, very powerful when your opponents can't afford to take 3 because you just cast it again, sack it again, and start exiling. We've also got Revelark. 5-mana 4-3 flying when it leaves the battlefield. Return up to 2 target creature cards with power 2 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, and it has Evoke for 6. You may cast this spell for its evoke cost. If you do, it's sacrificed when it enters the battlefield. Shriek Maw. It's 5 mana, 3, 2, fear when it enters the battlefield. Destroy target non-artifact, non-black creature, and evoke for 2. It's very cheap removal in this deck that can be reused multiple times. What a strong card. Harvester of Souls. 6 mana, 5, 5, death touch. Whenever another non-token creature dies, you may draw a card. Wow, wow, and wow, the card advantage, the card advantage, the card advantage. That's massive. Requiem Angel, 6 mana, 5-5 five, five flyer. Whenever another non-spirit creature you control dies, put a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Also very strong. We have Yosei, the Morning Star. It's a 6 mana 5-5 five, five legendary creature, Dragon Spirit. Gotta add that in there because dragons are pretty cool. Uh, it also has flying, if I didn't mention that already. When Yosei, the Morning Star, dies, target player skips his or her next on tap step. Tap up to 5 target permanents that player controls. That's absolutely vicious if you can constantly cast it. Butcher of Malakir. 7 mana, 5, 4, flyer. Whenever it or another creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Absolutely brutal because you're just forcing all your opponents to sacrifice as much stuff as you can kill off. And we have Lightning Coils. It's a 3 mana artifact. Whenever a non-token creature you control is put into a graveyard from play, put a charge counter on Lightning Coils. Beginning of your upkeep, if lightning counter, if lightning counters, gosh, lightning coils has five or more charge counters on it. Remove all of them from it and put that many three-one red elemental to tokens with haste onto the battlefield. Remove them from the game at end of turn. It's all right. Sorry, I couldn't find a better image quality, but literally that's the best one they had because Wizards wasn't doing very good image quality back then. Uh, that was a while ago when they printed that card, and um, 
probably fair it hasn't gotten a reprint because the original version is 50 cents. So who'd want to reprint that? Am I right? Our last two death triggers. We're almost done. Dark Prophecy. It's very good. Three mana enchantment. Whenever a creature you control dies, you draw a card and lose one life. It's like a weird version of Phyrexian Arena. Open the graves. Five mana. Uh, enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a 2-2 black zombie. Absolutely brutal in this deck. Category 5 is Enter the Battlefield Triggers. We have Ravenous Chupacabra. It's a 4-mana 2-2 creature beast horror. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and opponent controls. And then our final death or death trigger, Enter the Battlefield Trigger, is Grey Merchant of Asphodel. It's a 5-mana 2-4 creature zombie. When Grey Merchant of Asphodel enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life, where X is your devotion to black. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. Also very strong. Category 6 is our random utility pieces. We've got some of them. Swords, plowshares, one mana, instant, exile target creature, its controller gains life equal to its power. Always good. Stitch together, two mana, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Threshold, return that card from your graveyard to the battlefield instead if seven or more cards are in your graveyard. Also very good for recurring some of our best death triggers. Mortify, three mana instant, destroy target creature or enchantment, always, always useful. Read the bones, three mana, sorcery, scry two, then draw two cards, you lose two life. Pretty good card. Diabolic Tutor, because this is budget and it's this the best tutor we've got. Four mana, search your library for a card and put that card in your hand, then shuffle your library. And then our one board wipe in the deck, at least traditional board wipe, is Dusk to Dawn. Dusk is a four mana sorcery, destroy all creatures with power three or greater, and Dawn is hard to read. It's a five mana sorcery as aftermath. Cast this card only from your graveyard then exile it. Return all creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to your hand. Very, very strong. Last random utility, Ethereal Absolution. It's a six mana enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Creatures your opponents control get minus one, minus one. Four mana, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. If it was this creature card, you create a one, one white and black spirit creature token with flying. Category 7 is a short one. One page. It's just ramp. We've got the classic soul ring. Tap to add two. That's about it. And the mind stone. Two mana. Taps to add one. Pay one. Tap. Sacrifice mind stone. Draw a card. Orzov signet. Two mana. You can pay one. Tap it. Add a white and a black to your mana pool. Our eighth and final category in the deck is lands. Uh, we start with Baron Moor. It's a land that enters the battlefield tapped can tap for one black, and it also has cycling for one black. Caves of Koilos uh, enters the battlefield untapped. You can tap it to add one to your mana pool, tap it to add either white or black to your mana pool. Deals one damage to you. Evolving Wilds is the old classic tap sack. Search for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield tapped, and shovel your library. Forsaken Sanctuary is a Orzov Guildgate. Uh, Orzhov Basilica comes into play tapped. When it comes into play, return a land you control to its owner's hands. Hand taps to add a white and a black to your mana pool. Orzhov Guildgate enters the battlefield tapped. Taps to add a white or a black to your mana pool. That's about it. Scoured Barons is an Orzhov Guildgate, but you gain a life when it enters the battlefield. It's pretty good. Tainted Field taps to add one to your mana pool, and it also can tap to add either white or black to your mana pool. Activate this ability only if you control a swamp. And then Terramorphic Expanse is an Evolving Wilds. Our final part of our mana base, 14 planes, 15 swamps. I put them in layer like this because the unstable ones are cool. All right. Total value with Athreos is $74.29. Without Athreos, $46.32. So I successfully made... An Athreos budget commander deck. Thank you guys for watching. Like it says on screen, comment below if you'd like to see more of these deck techs because this one took a long time to make. 
And I really, really want you guys to think that I've done well because I would hate for all of this time to have gone to waste. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.